Alrighty, so today we're going to be having a look at dealing with outliers. In particular, how do we smooth out outliers? In fact, a large part of this is going to be looking at how are different ways we can deal with data that fluctuates up and down. So let's have a look at the data. So the following table shows profits from a school's annual spring fair from 2012 to 2018. And you can see it's just 2012 up to 2018 on the year. And the profit, it goes 12, 13, 15, 16, 25, 18, 19. So the question is, which of those stands out? Well, there's only one number in all of them that's bigger than 20, and it's five bigger than 20. So you can kind of already see it. It's going to be really obvious when we draw a graph. So let's set up our axes. So on our x-axis, we want to have our explanatory variable, which is going to be the year. And then the response variable is going to be profit. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 16, 17, 18. always good to plan out your axes. Alrighty, and then on our y axis, we need to find the smallest and the largest number. It's nice and easy 12.325. So we're going to start at about 10. Go up to 25. Make sure you draw your little starter. 10, let's go up to 2, say 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So once again, planning out your axes is going to make your time a lot easier. And you can see that the profits in thousands, that's what the three zeros there mean. So it's thousands of dollars. So that's, tw oh, sorry, yeah, 12,000, or 12.3 thousand, that's 13.6 thousand, so on and so forth. All right, so let's actually plot the points in. So 2012, 12.3, so about there. And then our next point is going to be 2013, 13.6. Next point is going to be 2014, 15.45. And so on and so forth. Alrighty, so you can see there is my completed graph. And hopefully you might notice where the outlier is sitting. <laughs> it's a pretty obvious spike up in the graph. But you can see apart from that, you've got this kind of gradual trend upwards. So there is certainly an increasing positive trend long term. But you can see that there's this funny aberrant point here. So what we want to be able to do is then um, go through it. And it does say predict the year in which the school cent centenary was celebrated with past with past students returning in grand numbers. Well, we're going to guess that's going to be 2016. All right. So that's part A completed. And now for part B, it says replace the aberrant point with dummy data. So we've got a few options for how do we smooth out this evil little point here. Well, one option is to just take the average of the rest of the data. So averaging up all of these ones and these ones all together and just plotting the average one. But note that it probably makes more sense to use just the neighbors because they're going to be more relevant to what happened that year so using the neighbors so one on either side 16.3 and 18.9 we're going to smooth out the data let me just do a simple uh, mean so the new oh, let's do this in red is going to be equal to what were the two numbers 16.3 plus 18.9 over 2, 17.6. Now that feels pretty good because if you look at there, the original data, you kind of see 
there was like, you know, 13, 15, 16, 18, well, makes sense if you put a 17, what is it, 17.6 here, it sort of feels right. So now on our graph, we can put our corrected point here, 17.6, which is going to be about here. And then we can have our smoothed data. So we should probably have a legend explaining. So there's my little legend. The only thing that this graph doesn't have is a title. So maybe you can come up and think with a good title to give for this graph. Alrighty. Um, and hopefully you can see there that once we do smooth out that, what do we think about the trend? Well, we still think the trend is positive and it's pretty linear too. And when I say linear, what I mean is that it's not just growing by a line, it's kind of growing by a relatively straight line. And why is it important to say positive and linear? Well, lots of things can grow positively, but some of them are straighter than others. So it's really important to be able to identify which ones are positive and which ones are linear. And what we'd say about ones with a bit of a curve in them, they can still have linear trend, but we'd say, uh, sorry, they can start positive trend, but they would be considered non-linear because they're not straight. Whereas this one would be linear. Alrighty. That's how you smooth over some points. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.